as you all can see, the computer has been fixed. Came on here to announce that the camera is working again. We kind of got it repaired. It kind of had some stuff involved in the screens where screens had to be replaced for the camera to work. So I'm not all that technical in terms of that stuff. I don't know all the details, but we'll just say that that is the reason why we can get back to recording videos on the tablet and doing the whole process where they go to the computer and get uploaded from there. So that is kind of the reason why I decided it was time to get back on here and continue the rest of this series on how we carved this Sassafras Golden Retriever. I'll mention a thing or two about how we drew these little lines in here for the hind legs. I think we're going to, you know, I tell you, I'm kind of getting to where so much arranging is going on that there's just getting to be a little bit mislayment of things sometimes. And But I'd say even this cud, it could be done with the V-gouge, but... I think it does just as well even with the knife so I say we can kinda cut along this line make it so it's going to be the <coughs> little thing all we need all we ask for it to be and so kinda make it where we're going to curve along here and show a little work as to how we do these little things we do and so with this little work here we kind of got to make it so the lines get really creative and then come along where we finally get the hind foot out of the dog there's just little things we come to see the saying to do and so I tell y'all that this is just what we do now so I kind of made these little lines here now we kind of got to carve along the hind foot to make it probably get a little bit more curved out like it ought to be and so make it to where it's going to show a little line in a little thing we do. I tell you all that we got the tail to work on here so that is where we shave away here make these little lines here and so all we do now to and somehow I tell y'all I can smell that sassafras as it's carving and so that's kind of what I've heard they always did was they took the root of the sassafras tree and they made tea out of it. I heard about that like in pioneer days. I even went to Blue Lick Battlefield where I sort of did some little shows out there here we kind of got the one side done we're going to work on the other and it was kind of like where we had a pioneer festival and kind of where somebody came out spoke up told stories told about that being the little field where Daniel Boone lost his son and that was kind of like the place where when I went out there to sell some carvings years ago I kind of got introduced to some sassafras tea because I saw they had candy out there in the gift shop and there was it was like these little type of something similar to candy canes except they were just straight sticks and came in all different kinds of flavors one of the flavors was sassafras so i asked about that i already knew that sassafras was a kind of wood and it 
kind of had a real good scent to it, but didn't know exactly what was edible about sassafras that they would make candy from it, and the lady told me about the tea they used to make from the roots of it. So, I think also, you know, some different stories I've heard, some people probably grew up having that from all I've heard and been around and seen and all, and it's just the kind of work where it was, those were the pioneer days. Well, here we got the tail a little more worked out now, and kind of now we've got to thin it out a bit, kind of make it so it's a little thinner than the butt here, kind of make it so it's going to work its way like this, and so, and so. The work we do, it kind of seems like it's coming this way. Make it so we see a little golden retriever come out of the wood. And I tell you, if you ever carve sassafras, you're going to know for yourself what a scent it has. There's even been a few of those, like you've seen the... Rick Bud's St. Nicholas figures, carved a few of those out of sassafras before, back in the days when I first started carving, and so they could have a little work come here and there even with them, but I say it's going to be the work it's going to come to be. I say, as for a little time, when we trim around the tail, it's going to come out to look about like this underneath. And so, here we got these little curves, these little places to round off here and a little rounding off at the top of the tail too and there's two ways to cut here I actually read the demonstrations as to like the two ways you can turn the knife and kind of forget what the two what the names of the two ways were but there's one way you cut like this and one way you cut like this and I'd say that we're hoping we're getting this along just fine, making it so we see how the work shell make its way to us. Bless the time when we work so hard, make all we do. Oh, I say a lot of time and effort to make this piece go about. I say, I tell y'all that this is something that we shall work our way about and then we're going to come up here to the side of the body trim things away here make it so we're going to see a little light of work put into the body and then see how he's always going to be a little ways just to turn out for us and then finally you know there's little places at the top where we kind of have to carve away to get rid of those little saw marks there and finally we got it smoothed out at the top of the back and There's moments when you'll kind of do things just to cool off a little bit here, but I say that
probably worked hard enough on him for this video and there's probably a few more little steps we're going to take further on, but I feel like I'm getting a little out of breath and my hand's getting a little tired, so I think I'm going to have to stop a video and take a break and continue on the next one. Thank you again for watching. Goodbye.